Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you. In part one, I spoke about the three inch brush and all of the things that I was able to do with it. As you can see here, uh, we were able to do the sky, we were able to do the bushes, we were able to do the flowers, the water, uh, the various trees, grass. So you can see all, all that was done with that one miracle brush. Now this inexpensive brush comes in different sizes, usually in three inch, two inches or one and a half inch. Uh, which of these three you use depends on the side of your canvas. Now I used the uh, three inch brush in part one and that was on a 12 by 16 canvas. I would imagine you may want to use the one and a half inch in a perhaps an 8 by 10 or 11 by 14 size or something of that nature. In this video I'm going to be using the angle brush. Now the angle brush I consider another miracle brush because of all the things that we can do with it. I'm about to show you exactly what we're going to do with it. We may use a palette knife for minor stuff, but basically pretty much everything we do on this video will be with the angle brush. So let's go ahead and get started. Here I'm going to use some brown to create the dirt at the distance where those trees are located using the angle brush the way I'm holding it here. And I use the angle brush also to create some dirt, like a dirt road, in the bottom of the painting. And again, notice how I hold the brush as I do this. I'm adding a little darker brown for the shadow. Here I'm put, uh, putting down with the angle brush the part, that, the part of the dirt road that is touching the water. And I'm using a darker brown. Now I'm using a darker green just to put the shadow of the dark areas of those trees in the distance. I'm using the tip of this angle brush for that purpose. Then add a little shadow here with some br darker brown for this road in the bottom. The angle brush that I'm using is approximately a half inch. You can always use a smaller angle brush. Again, it depends on the size of the canvas and what area you're trying to cover. But you can see all the things I can do with this angle brush. Now I'm doing the, uh, the uh, branches that are holding all this greenery, all this, these bushes. And in this area I'm using the complete angle brush, but I'm using it very lightly.
and doing this pretty much the same thing on the left side. Uh, you can't see it because unfortunately I covered it with my arm. Sorry about this. You'll get a better view as we go on. And with the pellet knife I'm adding some of the some white to help the water look a little more realistic and I'm doing this with the palette very softly very lightly putting a few lines in the water to make it look more like water I do some of this especially over the reflections of the trees in the water Just keep darkening the bottom of the I'm darkening the bottom of the flower, the red flowers. And again, because of the camera problems, I'm doing the same thing on the left side, but you cannot see it. But it's actually the same thing I did here. I'm doing in the on the flowers on the on the left side. Now I'm using the same angle brush to add some additional clouds in the sky and the angle brush is very good for this just to make the sky a little more interesting. I did that holding the brush sideways. Same here. I'm doing it with a little bit of blue here instead of violet. I'm just going over what I did before just to line the tree branches or the bushes branches so they can be seen a little more. They stand out more. I'm doing this with gray paint. Do the same thing on the left side. And I'm doing this with the angle brush. Very lightly. I'm going to darken the bottom here and it's an area where the sun is not hitting so it has to be darker and it has to have a shadow since the sun seems to be coming from the left side
there's absolutely no sun hit in this area so I'm darkening it with dark green very dark green and there you can see the shadow of the flowers and do the same thing here create a dark area for the flowers that are there I'm um, using the again the point of the angle brush here to do these finishing touches well actually they're not finishing touches but just to improve the look of the flowers show a few of those green areas and I recommend that you take your time when you're doing this there's never any need to rush this is to be enjoyed and whatever you're painting you want to take your time especially as, as you get closer to the details Now you can see how useful the angle brush is here. Here's another example of its capabilities. I'm going to create for now, let's just call it a dead tree. And to do that, what I do is I start from the top very lightly, and as I go down, I start squeezing more and more. In this case, I put a little bit of white on the left side of the angle brush. And, dark, and gray on the right side. Left white, the right side, dark side, dark paint. Just take my time very lightly, add the, uh, the branches to this dead tree. I call it a dead tree, but eventually, if I change my mind, I could actually add leaves to it. But for now, for this purpose and the purpose of this uh, tutoring, let's just call it a dead tree. Also, the angle brush is good to create some of the, bran the thicker branches, as I'm doing here. Again, you start lightly and then you start squeezing a little harder. No need to rush when you're doing the branches. Well, this pretty much, pretty much covers what the angle brush can do. I've shown you how it, it does a lot of details. 
uh, but this means that we are going now to in the to do another video part three where I will use another brush that we cannot do without and that is the liner brush so in part three you will see the many uses of the liner brush I sure hope you have enjoyed this part two and if you did don't forget to like share and if you have not subscribed you can subscribe now if you missed part one just look for it in YouTube thank you well I hope you enjoyed the video if you did don't forget to subscribe thank you